All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Habits You Love. Before we get started, I do want to say that this episode is sponsored by Crowd Health. I highly recommend jo- uh, looking up joincrowdhealth.com. I have gotten a couple of friends and family on it. I interviewed Andy Schoonover, the founder of it, a couple of months ago, and I was blown away by what he has created and as he's bringing humanity back to healthcare. So go to joincrowdhealth.com. I'll put more in the show notes. And I want to welcome my friend Joe Morris to the podcast today. She is a catalyst for leaders, a co-founder of Bluebird, and my personal coach and mentor right now. So I'm so excited for this conversation that we're going to have today. I just have to say, I met you at the first Bluebird event. When, when was that? April? April, April 21st. Doesn't it feel like we've known each other like way longer than April though? So much has happened. Yeah. Christina, my lovely friend who's also here, she last minute invited me to that event. I think it was like the week of. And she sent me the invite and I was like, this sounds really interesting. And I was like, the tickets probably won't still be available, but they were. I signed up. I came on that Friday and then phew, so much has happened since. So, <sighs> well, um, well, first of hi, everyone. And I just got to say, this is really unique because Kayla and I have we have we do know each other intimately yeah. pretty much now. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. And it's uh, it feels really weird to sit here with two microphones. I know. Between us. Well, I know. Usually it's over coffee yes. or over zoom yes but before we start we're and then i want to get it blue red i want to give you a present we're to starting with gifts put, this is how all of my talks with friends should, should start yes. <laughs> it's a thank you for, for having me and a thank you for a lot oh more oh my gosh a card thank you oh my gosh look how beautiful this is wow oh, it's so pretty i love it thank you shine and sparkle i'm gonna read the card later read it later thank you i love gifts i love gift giving so you and i I must share you and I must share that same love language <laughs> I think I've been told from a very young age never show up empty-handed mm. oh I'm like that too you like that to too. any party anything anything um yeah I don't know I just like to bring something I'm like I feel like I have to bring something to Completely. wherever I'm going <laughs> so so let's talk right so now um going back to Bluebird and yes. you and you coming in to Bluebird which is kind of wild yes. and I was sharing with you and I was sharing with Christina that now looking back at the video of mm-hmm. our first event, which happened on April 21st mm-hmm. here in Sarasota, mm-hmm. and looking at all the faces of everyone in that video, and they the have crowd. Na- and crowd, they have become our community. They have literally become yes. women that we now love and know, including you. Mm-hmm. And the intention of the Bluebird series is that you would walk in and you would be inspired you would have kismet connection Mm. and you would have joy in who you are and what you're up to. So it's just a delight one to meet you, delight two to know you. Mm. And now here you are going to be a speaker at our next event, which is coming up on July 21st. So do you want to talk a little bit about what you're going to speak about? And I'm a speaker too. So we're both speaking. So what are we going to talk about? Well, what's funny is like when I was sitting in that chair in the audience, I was like, you know what? I don't want to be in the audience for the next one. When I think you announced it, I was like, I'm not going to be in the audience for that one. I was like, I'm going to be up there with all the other women that were inspiring me um, while they were sharing their stories. So I was like, you know what? I'm ready to like take the step and be up there now. So yeah. So my topic is going to be um, how to unveil the light within. It's basically how, you know, sometimes in life our, our light, so to speak, can get dimmed Yeah. through experiences, through other people, through obviously bad situations and we kind of let that mean something about us or take it on as like our character or who we are or our self-worth yeah um, and I know that happened for me like I felt like I was like such a bright light and then all this stuff happened to me and I just kind of let my light get veiled and veiled and veiled and so my speech is definitely going to be about how to take the veils off and like let your light shine again and the steps that I took to do that and my journey to that. So that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm so excited. What are you going to talk about? <laughs> well, I don't I was, even know. I'm still looking to see, to work it out. So for those of you, you know, we don't know each other yet. So I hope we do get mm-hmm. to, to me. And, um, you know, I'm about to, next year, I'm going to be 50, which is kind of a milestone mm-hmm. in, in one's life. You yes. kind of get here and go, how did this happen? <laughs> But in the run up to that time, I've done 
quite a lot with my life. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a quick backstory and then create really what I want to talk about it at Bluebird, Mm -hmm. which is I um, launched a a lifestyle division where for one of the largest entertainment firms in the US. So we created um, clients who had TV shows, books, conferences, Mm -hmm. uh, programs, you name it. And we were really one of the first kind to really get that up and running. One of my clients back in the day was Sophie Uliano, who had a, a book on Oprah that Julia Roberts shared mm. to kind of get you the, the way mm-hmm. back, right? The weight of it. And yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But now it seems there's so many people who are lifestyle experts. Like it really started to birth mm. this entrepreneurship and this spirit and people want to take on their own self-development, mm. their own coaching, their own paths. And alongside that, I um, had the profound opportunity to lead courses for Landmark Worldwide. And I was one of 35 people at the time to go around and lead transformational programs. So I must have personally impacted over 30,000 people, which then had a ripple effect Mm -hmm. into millions. Mm, 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 mm. So I love people. Yes. And then (laughs) here we are. And when I kind of finished those things, and I've done other things along the way, but when I um, ended my job uh, two years ago, I didn't realize how tired I was. Mm. And I didn't realize that all I'd done for the most part of my life is work. Mm-hmm. I don't have children. I got married late. And so my focus has always been work. Mm-hmm. So at the, at the beginning of last year, I took a year off sabbatical, a year for the first time to really look at what do I need? Mm-hmm. What do I want? And what do I want to give the next chapter of my life to? And at that time, I was so burnt out, I didn't want to do anything, mm. like nothing. How hard was it to transition from work, 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 work to a, a breather and rest. It was the hardest thing I've ever done yeah. because I, it, my experience was I didn't know myself and I experienced I was just died in some way. Mm. It was the weirdest space to be in. And more the other challenge that I was dealing with is because I've known myself to do these huge things. Mm-hmm. I was like, how is anything ever going to top what I've already mm-hmm. done? So I just felt lost yeah. for about three months. But there's always more people to help. So what I hear you say is I was just focused on work, but your work was so meaningful and so empowering to so many people. It's basically like you were empowering others as opposed to it being work. I think, you know, a lot of us can work. We can go into an office and do our job and then we leave and maybe some of us do get time sucked into that. And we look back like, I haven't helped anyone. I haven't done anything. All I've been doing is helping one other person build their business, but you impacted so many lives. So I just very want to say good. that. Yeah, no, very good. And that's what I kind of, kind of saw for myself mm-hmm. because when I kept asking myself, okay, now what do I want to do? Or do I want to get a job? Or do I even want to coach people? Mm-hmm. And I didn't. It was really, I didn't. But I looked at what made me happy. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's always been a contribution. Mm -hmm. So whatever I was going to turn to, the only thing I knew is that I just want to be a contribution Mm -hmm. going forward. But the year I took was the first time I've ever took time for myself Mm -hmm. in my wellness and in my self-care that I've never done before. Like going to the gym was because I had to go to Mm -hmm. the gym. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it was this space of I have to do Mm -hmm. it or it's a good thing to do it or you've got to be doing it. Yeah, not from a deep sense of wanting to do it. Completely. Mm -hmm. So that was a real opening. It's like, okay, how do I, and this is what we connected on, I think it would be great to talk about, is how do we keep ourselves on this self-development journey Mm -hmm. of, realizing what do you need spiritually? What do you need physically? Mm. What is your attitude and outlook? How do you keep yourself current with what's going on with you? Mm. So how do you keep yourself on it? It it comes back to that pesky little word balance that (laughs) might get thrown around too much. Oh, we got to have 
balance in our lives. But how I look at it is, and uh, one of my favorite quotes is, a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm -hmm. So your boats are all those things, physical, mental, spiritual, financial, relationships. Yeah. Yep. And the tide is the energy you're going to put in. And if the tide comes in, it doesn't just move up one boat. It moves all of them. So I think putting 100% of your energy, not 100%, 100%, but like what you can give um, to each one of those. And I think it's so important to have them all equally aligned as opposed to, well, I'm going to let my physical go by the wayside so I can focus on my financial or I'm going to let my financial go by the wayside to focus on my spiritual. I think it, there has to be a good, a good balance. So I've always tried to do that. I've always tried to have little habits or behaviors in place where it's like, okay, my physical is something I move every single day. First thing in the morning, I do a workout, I do a yoga, I do a walk. That's, that's number one. And then it's spiritual. Okay, what am I doing for my spiritual financial? And let me check, let me check my bank account, my credit score. Are we good there? Um, so yeah, just, that's kind of how I do it. Um, I have, I don't think I've ever really let anything consciously go by the wayside. Well, you're way more advanced than I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me now but to get away gone. Like physical, though, it really does start with physical. I always say you can control 90% of your physical self. No one's forcing you to eat anything or not eat anything. No one's forcing you to not work out. They're not strapping you down to a chair and be like, you can't go to the gym. So 90% of your physical self, you can control, obviously, some circumstances you can't. Um, maybe geographical location, maybe, um, you know, someone who is disabled. But if you can focus on that first, everything else just falls into place. I think that really creates confidence. It creates um, pride, accomplishment, and, and yourself first, like inside with you, as opposed to pride, accomplishment, confidence in your work that's outside of you. When you can really go in and work on that first, you I don't know, just like the biggest sense of pride that I've ever felt is just accomplishing my physical goals, seeing what my body is capable of. Because now I am my own motivation. When I look at a picture of what I want to look like, I look at a picture of myself. I don't go on the internet and be like, who do I want to look like? I'm like, I have my own transformation that I can look back on. No, that's cool. I mean, I, um, you, are, you are definitely a lot more physically, um, I don't know what the word first, is. First. Yeah. First, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if, there's, if there's a thing, I don't yeah. want to. But put it, that's not me. Yeah. Right. So you, you have that relationship mm -hmm. with yourself mm -hmm. that you have a relationship to working out mm -hmm. that I don't have. So a lot of what I had to deal with and what I now work with executives in mm -hmm. is there's so many promises <clears throat> that we make to ourselves that we break. Mm -hmm. So if I keep saying I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and I might just be saying it to myself mm -hmm. and I don't go, how I start to show up for myself yeah. is someone who doesn't have any power. Mm -hmm. So now I have an experience of myself that's diminished just because I'm not making it to the gym three times a week. It mm -hmm. goes way more deeper than not just the physical side. It literally impacts how you relate to yourself and your experience of yourself. Yeah. So you experienced that yourself. You were kind of beating yeah. yourself up because you kept having these thoughts and you kept letting yourself down. Well, it's not that. I just broke trust with myself mm. too many times. Yeah. So for me, when I started to really look at my wellness, I started to see what did I need to restore trust with again? Mm. Where did I need to build that muscle? So could it be just working out once a week? But that's the one. But yeah. I know I can do that. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm going to hit the gym for 21 days and do a marathon and do all this stuff. Right. That's just outside of right. where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to journal every night. Or I'm going to talk to my friend about something that's important to me spiritually. Mm -hmm. So there's, so I kept looking at what could I put in place for me mm. to restore my power with myself. Yeah. And then when that foundational relationship that I knew I could trust myself in what I said I was going to do, and then challenge something else if you're ready for this. Okay. I didn't realize we were going to talk about this, but here Sorry, we go. Everything's off, off the cuff. Okay. Today. All right. So now look, the biggest thing that hit me as a woman is when I stopped working two years ago, my 
I was so outputted. What does that mean? Mm. I'd generated, I've given so much, I'd worked so much, and I'd worked in a way that a man has worked <laughs> in a man's environment. Mm. So I didn't really know how to receive or how to restore on every level mm. for myself. Mm -hmm. So when I took that year out, that year, I, every year has a theme for me. And that year was, I'm going to discover what it looks like to receive. Mm. Because I've been giving my whole life. Mm. Do you describe that as masculine feminine energy? Were you like, I was, were you like, I was so in my masculine or is that something you even tap into? I just didn't trust anyone yeah. else. So I was yeah. always the result producer. Yeah. I was always going to make money for myself. I was always the one that's going to make everything happen. I was the one that was going to make sure everything, do you know what I mean? There was you no sound like me <laughs> right <laughs> now. <laughs> so I'm looking at you being like, oh crap, no. <laughs> no, but that's what I learned. Yeah. So even though I was married to a man who wanted to give me, mm. I wouldn't let him because I was so independent, unaware yes. of what that was impacting me in our relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm just giving you one idea, right? So and then the other thing is my, my friend, Sherry James, who um, she's a master of Tantra. Okay. And she's also, uh, she supports men in getting their dicks working. All right. <laughs> That's like that. <laughs> She does. That's a fun job. <laughs> and she's the best. And it's all energy and yeah. spiritual healing. Wow. So no medicine? None. Wow. So she heals men. So when I so I'll link that in the show notes, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, that would be really good. We should put her in the so, yeah. in the show notes. Yeah. But um so anyway, she's a dear friend of mine. Mm. And I called her and I said, look, I really want to develop myself mm. in being someone that can receive. Because I just don't trust anyone's got my back, mm. really. Mm. So she then said, okay, so you've got to deal with this. I'm like, what is it? She said, white space. I'm like, what's white mm. space? Like S emptiness. Space in which you do nothing. Yeah. So hard. <laughs> and it was yeah. like two years ago when I took this on, that first year sitting in my room going, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. But then... It gave me the space to really be with myself in a way that I have peace with myself that I've never had before. Mm. So the power of being and the power of being in space for us to be and stop all this doing that mm. we do. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm like, oh, I'm sitting here for 10 minutes. I should be doing something else. Exactly. And like, actually, the, when I said I didn't shower yeah. <laughs> today, well, I did shower. I just didn't wash my hair. I, w I turned on the shower to wash my hair, and I was like, do I want to shower or do I want to do meditation? Because mentally, I needed a meditation. I thought I needed to shower and wash my hair so I can look a little better. But I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do meditation right. instead of showering. So that was like a, a wind for me today. <laughs> to sit. Yeah. yeah. To really sit and mm -hmm. be. But, but even meditating is used to escape from being here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if you're interested in what Kayla stands for, which is being on your own self-development mm -hmm. course and ongoingly transforming yourself and ongoingly look at the habits that you mm -hmm. love, the biggest game for you is how to be with yourself and accept every way that you are. Mm. All of it. Yep. And that takes courage to be with yourself in yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's a piece of what happened right yeah. now. And now I, I, just, I do want to ask, what did you think you needed to receive or what were you not letting like Pascal give you? Was it love, attention? Um, what were you trying to receive that you felt like you were blocking out for so long? I was so busy on trying to make things happen that I lost myself. Mm. So I was able to receive space. I was able to receive um, ideas. Like I literally get downloads of ideas yeah. now <laughs> and creativity in a way that yes. I haven't done before. 
Yes. I was able, uh, I mean, magic happened. Like money came in from places mm. I would never expect it to. And I didn't do anything for it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Which is weird for me. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a transaction. Very good. Trade this for that. Very good. And so, so in that space of receiving, I really saw how I wanted and what kind of lifestyle I wanted to build for myself mm. before I launched my business and Bluebird and the Bond Summit and everything I'm up to. That was a year for me to establish what my foundation was again, mm. if that makes sense. Oh, totally. This is why you're my mentor and coach right now, <laughs> because <laughs> you're literally coaching your past self. <laughs> yes. But no, and um, I didn't have anyone there yeah, either. Yeah. I have a really hard time. And I actually feel like I am in a little bit of that phase. I stopped taking clients last year. I don't have any clients right now. Yeah. I kind of have filled up my schedule, though, and I'm like in this point where I'm like, I really want to like take a step back from a couple of things, but I'm, I still have this like weird anxiety of like holding on to things that and I'm like, well, if I let go, what's going to happen? And so I'm in this place of like, I need to surrender and trust and let go, but it's still really freaking scary. Very good. So now that you just said that, so last year was all about receiving, mm -hmm. like allowing myself to be open. This is when I start discovering, am I a heart led woman? Mm -hmm or a mind-led woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is when the beginning of the bluebird started. When I engaged with where, what am I doing and for what? Mm -hmm. And where's it coming from? And who am I when I do it? Mm -hmm. So last year was received, but then this year was all about um, to trust life, mm -hmm. to trust life mm -hmm. and trust that whatever I am risking and creating is going to show up. Yeah. See, we didn't, when I came to Sarasota this time, I've been in and out for six years, but when I started um, here again two years ago, I think I knew four people. Mm -hmm. I don't really two know years anyone. Ago. Wow. Wow. And I'm now you're all over the town. <laughs> all I see is you beat bobbing around town with all your friends. <laughs> but this is what I want to share yeah. with you. And this is what mm -hmm. I want to share to anyone that's listening. See, when we think about wellness, we think of ourselves as an island, as an individual. I'm getting myself well. Mm -hmm. My mind is well. My body is fit. My ba 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 ba. But if you look at um, the blue zone. Have you heard of the blue zone? No. Okay. It's the blue zone. The blue zone. Um, oh my gosh. Whoever, if someone's watching this and they know the name of the guy that did this, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, but the blue <laughs> zone is, um, it's a known study of people in villages who all live over a hundred. Oh, like in Norway and stuff like that. I in think. Japan, in okay. Costa Rica. I don't know if okay. in Norway. One of the, yes, there's one country that like everyone lives to be like over a hundred and it's like a really, really small. I, thought, I want to say it's Norway or Denmark or something. Something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, so along with Denmark or Norway, there are these city, these little villages mm -hmm. that Daniel who created the blue zone went in and examined to find out what is it that has them mm. be in life and be healthy and live to that life. Mm. And one of the core things, apart from sunshine, yes, is and they're always which, outside. And they're always outside yeah. and they have a purpose, is community. Wow. So to me, what gives me my life is the people I have in my life. Mm. That's what keeps me well. Mm. So when I uh, came here this time, two years ago, I ran into a friend, Brett Diamond, who I'd known him from New York. He was in one of my programs. And we sat down and I said, Brett, is there anywhere that we can go dancing daytime <laughs> to really good house music? Yeah, daytime, Sarasota. <laughs> I don't know. Does that exist? Well, this is what <laughs> happened. And he went, no, mm. but I would love to do that. So... We created and we had five events last year. This is before we knew each other. Yeah. Vibrant. Mm -hmm. And Vibrant was a Sunday morning guided meditation, dance infusion with sun, love, peace, or yoga with heaven from a mind. 
and then full out dancing to house music from DJs I found in Tampa That's who came down. Amazing. And we danced our butts off. Why are we not doing this right now? We need to re, re, re this. It's yeah. there. I've just put my attention on Bluebird. Yeah. But you know, Brett <laughs> we'll would do it. it up. We Brett would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. So but we ha- and then but the intention was I want to find my people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know anyone. I want to find my people. Mm-hmm. My people are not in bars. No. My people are not, I don't know, tourists. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I want to find my switched on, amazing, up for it people. Mm-hmm. So we created that. And over the course of one year, I made friends with 300 people. <laughs> yeah. You got a big Rolodex now. <laughs> I do, but it's amazing. Oh, yeah. But but it's amazing. No, I a hundred percent. Every I've moved, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, like five five times to you know big moves to different states. And the first thing I do is like, I got to go find friends. Like, yeah. where can I hang out? Where do these people go? You know, um, and I and I, all the states I've lived, I have a group of girls that I still, you know, we're all still friends because I had to have that community exactly yeah. and you were lucky that you were able to step into that community but when I got here for me I'm not saying it didn't exist yeah. but for me it didn't exist mm. so it had I created it mm-hmm. right so so that was like the first evolution of beginning to create yeah. these relationships and these people and then out of that became the beginning of the next evolution of just people I love, yeah. You know, just <laughs> like Christy and Elizabeth yes, and I know. Michelle. Now you like Christina, feels who's so around the corner. Good. I just, know. just feels so good to just have people. And there's really good people in Sarasota, I must say. And you got to really find good. them. Yeah, you do have to find them. You they're like buried to, in the uh, little crevices. <laughs> <laughs> they are, but they're here. Yeah. So we are finding them. Mm-hmm. And um, but before I get to to the next piece, I want to share. Uh, what we were talking about yesterday, because I, you know, you, you've always been such an advocate for wellness, mm. which is so important to you yeah. and so important for when you work with clients mm-hmm. and what you do that um, at the beginning of this year, I noticed like my attitude about getting older was I wasn't really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. I started to see that I had a vision for myself that I was going to get old and sick. And it just wasn't... It scare you, probably. It it was scary. It didn't inspire me. Mm. It didn't motivate me. And I went, wow, really? Well, this is it. Here I go down the deep end. Yeah, this is it. This is... And (laughs) also, and I think as human beings, that's how we accept life. Like we get resigned to, oh, this is how it's going to be. Versus, I'm like, okay, that's fucked up. Excuse my French. <laughs> I'm already seeing yeah. myself as old mm. at 48. Mm. I'm powerless about it. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I went and found a doctor, Dr. Ernesto, who is an East and Western doctor who specializes in optimal health. Were you having any physical symptoms? Or, yes. Okay. So you, your body's kind of started to catch up with you after all those years of like... Beyond. Yeah. Just kind of weighing down and... Beyond. And and letting you know it's time. My battery was, it could never, it could never charge itself Mm, up. mm -hmm. So I always had the experience of being tired, even though I was sleeping nine hours a night. I had fatigue. I had these crazy migraines with these sinus headaches. Mm. Um, I just had the, my uh, system wasn't functioning that well. And my, I would, and I just had this really insane anger mm, in me that was just there. It yeah, was stored in there. I yeah. didn't really act on it, but if I tapped into it, I could rip yeah. the head off anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some stored emotions that weren't getting released through endorphins or, or working out and, and releasing that, rel- relinquishing oh. that. But I didn't realize because I was so focused on what I was doing. Like mm-hmm. when I was leading and when I was, I used to work like 100, 120 hour work week. Ooh. And when I was so into it, I didn't realize I was menopausal. Mm. So, You're so disconnected from your thank body. Thank you. Yeah. So for me, discovering 
this new relationship of how to get reconnected to myself and reconnected to the physical self and all the feelings and experience mm. that I have, he sat me down and he did all this. We're going to release all these trap motions in you stuff. I'm like, what the hell is all this? And, oh, cry. You know, like, Where is this coming from? <laughs> and he's so great because he said, just let it get released mm. and don't make it mean anything, which I did. Yeah. But then we changed my diet and then we did energy work and then he moved my stomach down and then we cleansed out parasites. Mm. And then we've done six months mm. of, but now my energy's back. Yeah, crazy. And my magic's back. Yes. So this has been the best year and a half mm. because now going into what's next, which is Bluebird and other mm. projects, I now have a foundation and a relationship to myself mm. that I've never had before. Yeah. And I'm excited about getting older. I'm excited about yeah. who I am. I'm excited about the wisdom I can give. I'm excited about what I'm creating. I love that. You know, I've already said to Pascal, if he, if he goes before me, I'm going to live on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop me. <laughs> so a year and a half, you're yeah. feeling really, well, actually the past six months, you're feeling really good, but... Year and a half. Now. Yeah. Only now. Physically, yes. Yeah. Took the year off to kind of sit with yourself, have your white space. When you have that feeling that you think of now that you have, did you ever have that in the past with actually working and feeling feeling fulfilled in other ways? Yeah, my I mean, I'm so lucky that everything I've done has been making a difference. Mm -hmm. So I've had fulfillment mm -hmm. in ways that is so moving. Mm. So that's always been there. Yeah. I just never had it for myself. Yeah. I just ask that because I feel like we all try to find that, but we think we're going to find it one time and that's going to be it. And we're set in that for the rest of our lives. Where yeah. You obviously are an example of like, you, it can come in waves. It can come in stages. You could have that and build that up and have that in the moment and then do something completely different and find it again. You can keep recreating yeah. yourself. Yeah. I heard something really interesting last night. I was listening to a podcast and um, it was so interesting. They're talking about dopamine, you know, the um, happy chemical that yeah. gets released from your brain whenever you feel something happy. Um, but what was so funny is that they were basically saying um, you release the most dopamine whenever you're actually working towards something mm -hmm. and having the effort put into it as opposed to like the actual result of it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like everyone's like, just climbing this hill, trying to get to that result, thinking that that's where all the happiness is and that's where we'll feel, like feel fulfilled. But actually, once we get there, we're actually like, oh, this is it. That was like two minutes worth of feeling good. But like actually the way up there is where, and there's another chemical that I can't remember, um, starts with an E, but it was something else. And that's like effort. When, you have put, when you're putting in effort, that uh, chemical gets released as well as dopamine. And just like the journey along the way, I thought that was so interesting. So it basically is just like, the journey is what you're going to enjoy the most as opposed to the actual result. So, well, let's see if we can turn this one on its head a bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because this is an interesting conversation. Yeah. So, you know, you have thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. And we, I think we have what, 4,000 thoughts a day? No, we have like 60 or 78,000. No, really? That's what J Dr. Joe Dispenza oh, says. Come on, Dr. Joe. <laughs> I mean, I like the 4,000 better because <laughs> I'm like, I can't manage well. 60. <laughs> really oh, said that many. Okay. Yeah, so, that's what he says. But so there's been a lot of work on people being aware that they have thoughts. Mm. Yeah. That is that is the work though. That being is Being aware of the thoughts okay. and not being the thoughts. Exactly. But that's so, that also goes for emotions mm -hmm. and feelings mm -hmm. and chemical feelings. So if you can kind of get, oh, there's an experience of happiness right now. Okay, there's a thought right now. You're having the experience of happiness or mm -hmm. you're having that release of dopamine. So if you can transcend your mental state, your emotional state and your physical state, then you become this space of awareness of who you are in life. Mm -hmm. That's a different relationship to oneself. Yeah. So I kind of look at things differently. I don't look at where you're going. I work with people and clients on where you're coming from. Mm. Who mm. are you being right now? And what are you creating right now? 
like right now in this conversation, mm. what moves you the most about us to having this conversation right now in this moment? Mm. What touches you? Um, I love just deep conversation. Like we've never had these discussions before. So obviously it's new for us. I like new, yeah. like, ooh, that's exciting little tip to learn about you and the other person. Yeah. Um, thought provoking. I love I love thought provoking conversation where people hearing this might definitely take something yeah. away from it. Um, yeah, that's that's really what I love. Yeah. So if you can be in the presence of that, you love that right now. Mm. There's no getting to some future yeah. to get that experience. Yeah, exactly. It's a yeah. now by now phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So that story of trying to get somewhere yeah. has you never be here. Exactly. And yeah. then you miss life. Mm -hmm. And then you miss the joy of it. Mm -hmm. Like just you and me talking like this, that got born out of Bluebird. And it's, it, I'm just amazed that I'm sat <laughs> having this conversation. Every week we talk, like, you're like, yeah. all right, let me tell you what happened this week. I'm like, oh, my gosh, yes. so much is, but it's, it's awesome to witness. But, and you too. Yeah. Because you're, we're all growing and connecting yeah. and, and creating. But it's so sad if you miss the ride. Mm -hmm. So... I just love supporting people and being present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely something I've had to work on. We all do. Yeah. We all do. <sighs> and that's what last year taught me, mm. that when I have those thoughts and they're already going gangs of buster, yes. like, i got to do this and i got to do yes. that and what about this? And, blah, 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 blah. and I can feel this, roll, like, this mm. whole storm going. Yes. That's my code for I've got to go and sit in the garden with the dogs for an hour. I was going to ask, what are your what yeah. are your habits or behaviors that you do when you feel those start to creep up? Yeah, I literally, if I have any, I, well, one is I have this code with everyone I work with. Wellness, well-being comes first. Mm. If you're not well enough, we don't do this. Yeah. That also includes if my mind is too much. Yeah. My mm. mental wellness. Mm -hmm. I will cancel everything. Yeah. I'm not afraid to put myself first. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good. That's one thing. Yeah. And then I will literally go sit in the garden. <laughs> I want a garden. <laughs> but what like do you today, do? Well, today, for instance, I wrote down, I wrote out what I wanted to get done today. Yeah. I accomplished all that by like 1030 AM. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, then I was freaking out because I was like, it's only 1030 AM and I'd have nothing else to do. And I felt like I'm like, what else do I, you know, so then I just yes. start to try to find other things to do. So that's one thing that I'm really trying to work on. So I immediately, I was at a coffee shop. So I immediately left. And I was like, nope, I'm done. Close laptop, go home. I took my dogs on a walk um, around, around the neighborhood. And then I was going to shower and get ready. Then I was like, no, I'm just going to sit. I'm just going to sit. So yeah, I'm getting better at it. Um, I typically, yeah, I'll typically like to just sit and listen to something in my, in my earbuds or take my dogs on a walk without my phone, without anything. So I can just hear the birds, hear yeah. the nature. Um, so yeah, that's what I that's do. That's good that you said without your phone. I notice for myself, if I, if I finish my day and I just start to sit on my phone mm. and then I get into any social media scrolling, yes. that is a tunnel. Yes. Oh my gosh. No, I don't know. Hole. It is. We should talk it? about what? what my little experiment I'm doing yes. right now. We can talk about how like being more personally connected. Um, that's yeah. the theme of Bluebird connection yeah. and as opposed to digitally connected. So right now I'm like 10 or 11 days in of off my personal Instagram. I'm still logged into my podcast Instagram so I could share all the things about the podcast. But yeah, it feels amazing. And I'm like documenting things that happen, the thoughts and realizations that I have. Um, like what? So a little trick that I'm doing is that every time I click on the app and I see that I'm logged out of my personal account, I'm like, okay, well, I clearly did this for a reason. Like I'm going to stick to what I said. And so I immediately get out. And if I click on the app, I have to immediately go to my text messages and text someone that I know. Yeah. Like appreciation text, a grat gratitude how are you? What's new? Let's catch up. Um, so I've been doing that. I think I've like <laughs> caught up with like 10 different people from the past, which has been great. And like, oh my gosh, so glad to hear from you. I called my dad one night and I never called my dad. And he was like, well, what are you doing? Like, you know, just out of the blue called him. And then um, some realizations that I had, which have been great, are no one cares. 
No one cares about what you're doing because not one single person has texted me and been like, where are you? Like, why are you not on social media? I need to see what you're doing. Where, like, what are you doing all day? You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. no one cares. So like, stop putting so much pressure on yourself to show up for people that like, basically don't even care. It's not that they don't care. They care about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you mean by that? Well, if you look about, look at it, when you're in your own world, you're just thinking about yourself and what right. you're doing, right? right? So that's what everyone else is doing. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I mean. They don't yeah. care about what you are doing. Yeah. They care about what they're doing. Well, yeah. yeah, very yeah. good. So yeah. give you some freedom, right? To yeah, kind of freedom and not the mindlessly scrolling, not the comparison and all the things. So it's, it's felt really good. I'm more scared about the... Um, the quality of the news on social media right now. Hmm. So now I'm going to show my age, right? You all know my age, but show my age. There was, um, when you used to go to the um, news agent, there was like the newspapers, there was magazines, and then there was the dodgy magazine, like the Inquirer or something. Okay, like Don't a it, gossip magazine? or uh, It's oh. worse, like, oh, the aliens have landed oh. and taken away the king and queen. And yeah. <laughs> it was like the first... Just unrealistic news that is never going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. And it was always to the side yes. of the cashier. Yes. And you saw it and you'd never buy it. You would read the cover, though. But you would look at it <laughs> because you're like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> they still uh, have some sort of those. But that's my experience. No, but that's my experience of social media now. Yeah. Is that magazine mm. is throughout. Yeah. About anything. That's a, that's the bad thing is anyone could say anything and there's no fact checking. There's no. No. Is that true? Where did they get that? What's the source? It's you hear it and you immediately I'm like, <gasps> like you, you have an emotion towards it. And that is impacting your mental health. Mm. That's impacting your wellness. Totally. That's impacting how you're going to think about the future. Mm. That's impacting how you're going to connect with someone else. Mm -hmm. That has such an impact. I mean, that's why, you know, Hallie with No Blue News, who's also one of the speakers yeah. of Bluebirds, what she's doing, even though it's the beginning, is trying to say, hey, mm. enough yeah. of all this. Yeah. And let's start talking about something that's more positive. Yeah. Yeah, which will always, unfortunately, probably be, you know, going against the grain, I feel like. But it is good yeah. to have yeah. those pieces in there, yeah. little tidbits. Well, you, and, as, and then as a consumer, look, I'm clear I can't change the world. Mm -hmm. I can only have power in my response to what it is and what I'm creating mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get on board with that, that's awesome. If you don't, no problem. Go do whatever you yeah. want to do. Yeah. But if I can be authentic and have integrity in who I am and what I'm creating, I think that's what that's where we all start to have power. Yeah. With ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if it's one person watching one video, that at least is is the right movement for that one person and that one video. Yeah, definitely. A little segue here. Go what on. would you give, uh, what advice would you give to someone who may be where you were and maybe they're like, I don't know who I am. I feel like I'm lost. Yeah. So, so on that time out, what I did was I really spent time looking at, like you touched on these areas of, of you. Mm -hmm. So I went online and I looked at courses. I found people who could talk to me about spiritual conversations. I did creativity. I put myself into a feng shui course. I mean, I just really looked to see what would intrigue me mm. and what would excite me and what would develop me. Because there's, no, there's, there's nothing that I'm going to find out. It's more about what's going to light me up and what am I going to create? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that to me is more people trying to sit there and go, I'm trying to find myself. You missed the point. Mm, yeah. There's no you to find you don't out. Find yourself. Yeah. You just got, you kind of rediscover yes. who you've always been. Exactly. I think people have a pretty general idea. Maybe like you said, so maybe they, this is like a bizarre example, but they quit their job and they're like, okay, I have all this time. What am I going to do? I think people have a general idea of like their interests, their hobbies, what lights them up. But I do think it takes a little like trying things out, putting yourself out there. You could try something and not like it. Be like, well, I thought I might like that, but I really don't. So I'm going to kind of go on to the next. Do you feel like that's kind of what you did? Did you feel like you kind of put yourself in 
multiple no, situations. I mean, this is the one thing I'm, I, I know about myself. I always risk it. Me too. Yeah. See, no one's born courageous. Yeah. That's something you've got to create for yourself. Yeah. And that comes in taking risks. It comes in moving countries. It comes in going after things that are completely out of your mindset that you can never accomplish yeah. and you accomplish it. Yeah. So it's, it's the ability to take a risk mm. and give yourself the freedom to either have it work out or have it not work yeah. out. That to me is where you really start to discover yourself. Totally. Yeah. Not playing it safe. Yeah. You're going to, you're definitely going to fail. Yeah. Def I actually just watched Brene Brown's on Netflix, uh, The Call to Courage. Yeah. So good if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah. She's like, if you're going to live in the arena, you're going to know failure. You're going to fall. You're going to know heartbreak. But yeah. you'd rather live in the arena on the dirt, in the, on the turf, whatever it is, and live in the cheap seats and just be watching and be an observer. Completely. So. And that's why. Bluebird. So let's talk about yes, Bluebird, yes, right? Yeah. So that's why we created Bluebird. Hold on, I do want to ask one question oh, before yeah. we segue. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? <sighs> Getting married. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, so you read my mind. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. But as soon as I met him, I knew I wanted to be with him. Mm. Um, biggest risk. Becoming a forum leader. That was the biggest risk. Mm, forum leader. That was, yeah, being a, a program leader for Landmark Worldwide, that was the biggest risk because that's like going to the Olympics of coaching. Mm. So that was the most challenging thing I've ever done for myself. Yeah. And I'm internally grateful for doing it. And now I can use everything I learned totally. in a different way. But yeah, that I was for you saying it. Yeah. You kind of like gave up your life to go do that. Is that you what? do? Yeah, you do. So, it's a vocation. Yeah, it's it's you you. It's like going into. Um, how am I going to put this? It's like becoming the president. Mm. That is all you're concerned for. You have a country in front mm. of you. Wow. Yeah. And then we're, all we're concerned for is people. Yeah, that's so great. So that was but a big it, one. Obviously worked out well <laughs> <laughs> it did I mean no regrets at yes. all and actually my coach who coached me her name is Laurel Sheaf who was the most amazing human being mm. mentor that I just aspired to be um makes me cry actually she was just so amazing mm. because she gave me and others this bluebird and said you are always the magic mm. so bluebird is actually in honor of her mm -hmm. In what she taught me. Mm, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about Bluebird. Why'd you start it? How'd you start it? What's your vision, mission? Yeah. So that was part of it was first off just in honor of another woman who taught me to love Yeah. in the big arena. Mm. When love... did you start working with her? Um, like six years ago, okay. seven years yeah. ago. Okay, yeah. Cool. So but she, you know, it's, it takes something that like when you become a real leader in life and you become a heart led leader, mm -hmm. you're going to have your heart crushed. You're going to have people do what they do, but you're someone who wants the best for people. You're mm -hmm. someone who wants to see people succeed, yeah. see people win. And not many people are like that. So I was like, okay, how do I find them? <laughs> and you, you found them, I would say. That's so amazing. Yeah. So Christy, who's the yeah. co-founder, and Elizabeth, who's now the spiritual director, mm -hmm. she, uh, we created What is a Bluebird Woman? So for anyone listening, because we've been talking about this for a while yeah. now, it's a woman who, like you, like me, has gone through such an experience that it nearly destroyed them. They thought they would never get through it. Literally through that has taught them so much that now that has become their mission, their lesson, their business, their organization. So the first Bluebird, which, and even creating that event, you know, that was another place of risk in it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna yeah. book the venue. I yeah. mean, I don't know if you know this and how I found the speakers, I put these posts in Facebook groups saying, do you know any women that inspire you? Mm. And people responded and I called up and interviewed 25 women Yeah, and spoke cool. to 25 yeah. strangers. Yeah, And that's how I met Kendra yeah. and Kelsey 
and um you I think you somewhere you came to yeah. the event but that's how that yes, happened it was yeah Barry is that her name huh there wasn't there a Barry or something Mm-mm. no okay anyway it's okay yeah I'm trying to think who there was I uh, know my brain went dead I had the um like documentary Oh, Bernie. Bernie. Yeah, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Bernie. No, that's it, (laughs) Bernie. No, but Bernie Mm -hmm. came from Susan, who owns North Star. Yeah, yeah. And Susan, she's here, and I went to Susan, and I said to her, Susan, I'm thinking about putting on this event. I'm terrified of doing this. She goes, why are you terrified? I said, because I don't want it to be another this is networking, this is my business, this is, I don't want it to be that style event. So I asked her if she would be my um, excellence advisor. (laughs) You just great jobs. I love it. (laughs) And she did. You have this job. (laughs) I did. And I went and I reviewed the vision for it with her. And then I reviewed all the speakers with her and she was a speaker. Then I reviewed the venue with her and then I reviewed even the lunch, which mm-hmm. is a three course Italian gorgeous lunch, like everything mattered, everything mattered. And I kind of created it. So it was just so done from the right place. Right. It really was. So you can feel that. Yeah. Everything was touched. Yeah. Mm, it was. And again, so that was the first. And it took me to be courageous to go, I'm going to do this event here not really knowing that many female business owners. Or if anyone's going to show up, are they going to pay? Exactly. Is it going to be a a dead? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So, Mm -hmm. so, but me and Christy said, look, there's something here that people are connecting to. As soon as I spoke to Kelsey, as soon as I spoke to Susan, as soon as I spoke to Bernie, they're like, I'm there, I'm in. I could feel the beginning of of something coming to life. Mm -hmm. And so we had our first event, which you came to. And it was uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I mean, Hillary, who was here, I think, last month, she did our in-chair yoga. She's going to be at the next one. And um, there was just something about the space that got created that women, I never forget forget over this, Dina. She's a friend of mine. Dina, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about you here. (laughs) But she's very... She's very prim and proper. She's very classy. Everything's put together. You know, she's just like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the end of it, her hair was swept back like this, like she'd be in a wind tunnel. She was like, oh what gosh. just happened to me? <laughs> it was the dancing and it was the it inspiration. Was the yeah, and yeah. the connection yes, and yeah. the openness. And it was just, uh, uh, you know... Um, Oh my gosh, my brain's going down blank. But a woman came up to me from Stella Rose Events who created all the beautiful furniture in the space. Um, She said to me, she goes, Joe, I've been to so many events and so many women events. She goes, this is the best one I've ever been Mm -hmm. to. And I said, why? She goes, because this is the first place I could be me. Mm. Oh my gosh, amazing. So that was the authenticity that got created. I felt it. I felt it all. It was so good. Yeah. I think I I even came up and like introduced myself to yeah. you. So I was just like, I don't even know what was happening. I was like, I'm, I don't know why, but I feel like I have to do this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then when you're inspired yeah. by something bigger than you, it does pull you. Yeah. It does call you. And it has you step out of your comfort zone. That's real courage, by the way. Yeah. Because you did come up to me and said, I want to be a speaker. I'm like, yeah. all right, we're going to meet. Yeah. And then the same with Nicole, you know, yeah. same thing. And me too. I'm a speaker too. And I'm yeah, it's like, your so, own thing. So <laughs> you, got, you spoke in between everyone's, which was great. I kind of kept the, yeah, the, the flow. flow of it. But, um, but what I'm most proud of, because when I finished leading, because I led for 17 years and finished being with people, I thought, um, after Bluebird, I went home and I spoke to my husband, who, who's amazing. You know, he's such a champion for everything I do and everything I create. I went home and I cried my eyes out for two hours straight <laughs> because of the space and what mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. It was just... Did you just feel totally aligned? It was just more than I could ever imagine. Yeah. And it just moves me now. It's, yeah. It was more than I could ever even imagine. Because the women at that event, and I don't even want to call it an event, it was just this space in which women could be and share themselves. I mean, the speakers were phenomenal, mm-hmm. everything about it. I like, like you said at the beginning, there was no, 
not to say there wasn't a purpose, but there was no like a transaction that had to happen after anything. It was like, we're going to come, we're going to be inspired. We're going to leave motivated. Yes. And that's how you felt. As opposed to, like you said, it's like, well, I'm Kayla and this is how you can work with me. And you know what I mean? So there's no pitching. Yeah, there's no pitching. Exactly. Yeah. Um, to me, if you really allow yourself to get connected to someone, you don't have to sell anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing to sell. Yeah. It will naturally happen if it's, supposed to happen like yeah. you'll you'll work it out you know mm -hmm. and I think as women and as heart-led business women and the women that were in there and this ecosystem that's starting to get built we will naturally do that for each other because we want to see each other yeah. win it's not what can I get it's what can I give yes. and it isn't oh I'm going to pitch you and all that stuff it's interesting I was talking to Jen who's one of the speakers for the um, July event actually mm. today oh yeah and she, we were talking about the essence of Bluebird and we're, she was saying, Joe, I haven't been to one yet. So I want to work through my talk with you and we're going to meet together because I'm like, Jen, I need to work my talk through with you because I'm doing one as well. <laughs> Can we all meet to go over yes, our talks? I think we are. And I actually proposed that. I think, yeah. I, I think we need a meeting yeah, yeah. to support each other yes. here. But um. <laughs> And we'll all do great. I've got no yeah. question about it. And But what I loved about her is why she said yes and why she aligned with it. Because she just loves people. Mm -hmm. And she she her questions were coming from the right place. Like, what are the giveaways for the women? What do you know? What are who are the women coming? Is this going to resonate for them? Like she was there to make a difference. Yeah. Not to get a business transaction. Yeah, that's good. Now that will come. If you're the real deal. Right, right. Just um, that's the byproduct of just exactly. Being yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm like so excited. There's just so many things going on with Bluebird. Like, yeah, I can't keep up. I'm glad you're kind of managing <laughs> all of it. And you're just giving me the updates. <laughs> yes. Um, I have two more questions. And oh. we'll wrap this up. One is very uh, might be kind of weird, but I don't. This isn't a bad I'm thing, but I'm gonna drink water before yes. you ask me this. I can tell. Um, well, no, it's nothing bad. I, I just noticed that I, I'm wondering if you always cried so easily, and that's not like in a bad thing, like in a bad way. But did you always like cry? No, I never cried. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm like, I just like, I think that's like really good though. I feel like your emotions are just like fluid and and like, and they never used you. to be. Yeah, I had to watch movies to cry. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I remember you yeah. telling me that. Yeah. yeah, I just couldn't. I would yeah. sit there and I'm like nothing's coming out. Yeah. But now I'm a leaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. But do, like do we need some squeeze some tears yes, out of you? I, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, God, I feel like I have no emotions sometimes. I haven't cried in a while. So I need to work on Sometimes that. it's it's it takes a little this is what Dr. Ernesto is working with me. Mm. He's giving me the space to experience all the ways. Yeah. And just I not know. let it who cares? I know. Who, you told me yesterday, chill the fuck out, Kayla. I was like, okay, thank you. That's the best coaching advice I've gotten ever. <laughs> and then the last question, which we always finish with yes. on Habits You Love, is our mega, our megaphone moment. This Ooh, is, I didn't know there was a megaphone yeah, moment. Yeah, but it doesn't work. Okay, so you're just holding it like it's, yeah. like it's for fun. But um, this is where I ask you, what do you know for sure? If you had a megaphone to the world and everyone was stopping and going to listen to Joe and what yeah. you said and actually go and apply it. Yeah. What do you, what's one thing you know for sure? Trust yourself. Trust yourself. All right. I like it. Trust yourself. Yeah. Take risks. Be courageous. Trust yourself. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you cool, so Hazel. much. I'm thank excited you. to share more about Bluebird. That will definitely be in the show notes, more on the episodes. Um, excited for the event, all the upcoming events with everything going on. And uh, yeah, I just, I love you. I love you too. I'm so glad we met and connected and yeah. I'm excited for the future. Thank you. Thank you.